Let's dive deeper into the action that we got at the close, equities, bonds, currencies and commodities. Let's track out to Abigail, who's got what we're watching first. Well, Caroline, stocks may not be doing much here in the U.S., but where we did have some action, as you know, the British pound against the dollar. Take a look at this intraday chart, up six-tenths of one percent. It's best day in about a month. This, of course, on hopes that a Brexit deal will get done, renewed hopes. Let's put this into the context of a long-term chart that we haven't looked for, uh, at, looked at for a little while, but makes the case for the dollar sixty uh, that we have talked about a number of times. This goes back all the way to 1970 at the highs here, closer to 260 at the lows in the early 80s, closer to a dollar five. Uh, the recent high back in 2009 or so, uh, above two dollars. And then, of course, over the last uh, few years on Brexit fears that a deal would happen, uh, a hard deal, a hard Brexit, we see going down to a dollar 20. But right now, this pattern within here appears as the bulls are stepping up, Mike. If we do see uh, the pound hold right around current levels, a dollar 29 or so, and then possibly go toward the middle of that channel, a dollar 44, we're very likely to go to the top of that channel. All of this, it's a small weighting to the dollar index, but may just suggest that some of the big dollar bears out there could be right, because this long-term chart of the pound does look rather bullish, Mike. Thanks, Abigail. Well, some of the bears getting it right today were in the natural gas market, a huge drop in natural gas, down about 5.5% to below $2.64 per million BTU. That's the biggest drop since January. And this means that notes and ETFs that track both natural gas and producers of the commodity are the biggest decliners among exchange-traded products today, especially UGAZ. That's the Velocity Shares Daily Three Times Long Natural Gas ETN. Now, some of these notes and ETFs are rather small. That UGAZ is actually pretty big. It's about a billion dollars in assets. And as advertised, it's delivering triple the performance of natural gas today, just on the downside. And this all comes after Commodity Weather Group and some other weather services are forecasting that this cold snap that we've seen on the U.S. East Coast will probably end later this week. Temperatures will return to, to normal. And meanwhile, the Energy Department had reported that it's seen near record volumes of natural gas placed into storage this injection season. And, Katie, traders are also talking about a trade known as the Widowmaker. That's the spread between March and April futures. That spread narrowed by 23 percent today. Katie, that's the most since data on that spread has been available since 2016. Thanks, Mike. I'm looking at correlations today. Dollar yen is the most correlated to 10 year Treasury yields since early 2018. Unsurprisingly, that's been great news for dollar bulls. The dollar rose to a four month high against the yen last week as Treasury yields spiked. However, the greenback's next leg higher may depend on the the 10 year yield breaking 2%. That's the view of ING, who says that that could further boost the dollar against some of those low yielding currencies, such as the yen. Now, the bond market's closed today, but we ended Friday at about 1.94%, so not too far away from that key 2% level. We've got plenty of catalysts this week, including US CPI on Wednesday. So it's going to be important to watch this link in the days ahead.